November 24, 2013. We have some new images from Sechi guys, and it's uh, impressive. Isun has, as you remember, it took the uh, X flare sudden burst on the 19th, then on the 21st, just as the flare tracker predicted, it took the CME from the same blast. But it has regained its tail. Now, this is when the X flare burst on the 19th hit it. Watch it as it starts to regain strength, gets a little wider on that front, on the outer coma. Now approaching is the 21st CME from the blaster. Remember the flare burst traveled out almost instantly. Flare tracker had this just right on the 21st. Now it almost drips ISUN back again. Check that out. But it is starting to regain its tail. Now look at Mercury, guys. ISUN is 25 million miles further away than Mercury is from what, from this viewpoint on this camera. That's right. Mercury is 25 million miles closer than ISUN. Again, there we go with the tail getting impressive again. Check this out. Remember, that's the size of Mercury, 1,516 miles. That's the radius. Check that out. This comment is the little comment that would not stop, except I don't think it's too little, guys. Now, what I wanted to do was check today's update on the Comet ISON Observing Campaign, CIOC, or the, I think it's the Comet Observers on Crack. I'll tell you why, guys. They missed the whole event. This whole article, which I will link to, is saying they're sitting here watching on the 24th, waiting for CME or Flare to strike ISUN so they can measure it. They missed it. They missed the whole thing. This article is, they, they say they're watching it. They, they talk about Inky back in 2007. Again, I think these, something's wrong up here. Uh, they may need to drug test them, guys, because the most important, most impressive flare ever catch, captured hitting a comet was the one we watched, and they missed it. I wonder if con Congress is aware of this, but read this, guys. Comet Ison entered the field of view of Stereo A on November 21st. It said, now, Comet Inky is there, too. Presently, listen. The two comets are being gently buffeted by a solar wind, and their tails are wagging back and forth accordingly. I wonder who's wagging this dog, man. I wonder how many of the politicians really know what's going on. Or as we'll be watching ISON. Pause that and read it, guys. It is Jay Leno needs this. It's that funny. But here we, again, look, we've got ISON. We've watched this forever. Now it's going out of the camera. And what does that mean? It means it's coming into the red camera where Inky is. Now check these images out. But again, you see ISON strengthening, regaining its tail. Now look at this. Inky's, the smaller comet, even though it's supposed to be a little larger, it's 25 million miles closer to the camera. I guess we're just supposed to believe anything, guys. ISON is 25 million miles further away than Inky. Now, they have given, and I'm going to give the highest estimate. They went, the rough estimates are from 1 to 5 kilometers. They started out at 3.5. So using the 5K, that would put it almost the same size as Inky, which is 4.8K. But it's 25 million miles further away. I just can't do NASA math. Never smoke crack like that. Check that out. Very impressive images. Very impressive images. Again, Mercury and um, Inky both are the, at the same distance from the camera at 25 million miles. Closer than ISON. Now, this is one of the newer images, and I took the temperature all the way down to see what was inside it, guys. And as dim as I could get it, that's a massive piece of rock, that centerpiece. And I think there's two smaller ones in there. If they were not swept by, back by that CME on that last image, not the first blast, but the CME, if you watch that very closely, that struck it on the 21st, had an effect. It almost took the tail off again. Now, guys, I was going to do a kind of a longer, drawn-out version of this video. But what you're looking at, of course, on the right is a CB radio. Now the new ones have come down to $35. I'm not promoting any brand or product or anything. 
On the left, you see portable um, solar panels. That's about 80 watts. Guys, that used to be several thousand dollars when these panels came out. Now you can get the kit that includes the uh, inverter and the um, power supply regulator in the in white box. Now it won't come with these batteries, which these in this case are deep cycle marine. They will hold a charge longer. The more batteries, the longer through the night and the more things that you can run on it. But with this system here, we're looking with the batteries, 450, including the radio guys. But uh, any of you ham operators, please send us some information on how we could listen to your channels because you guys have the widest range. And another thing on the CB radios, I think you can get more expensive models that will pick up some of the short wave and ham systems so we and you can hear around the world because it, it hears the curve. It, they bounce off the atmosphere and back down. But guys, here's the latest solar update and I waited till the end of the video to find the information. We're still in the same situation we were this morning. We have the suns, two sunspot groups on the right that have the configuration for X flares, same way the last flare was. And this is the X-ray flux out of Boulder. Notice it's just an intensity and frequency, not amplitude. We're still down there. But it, coming back from the 22nd, go to the 25th, you'll see the increase. And we've had, you saw this morning's video where we had this flare run up the side of the sun on the right. It happened again, back to back. That's that big hole. It's setting in what it did, of all things, remember, it changed uh, ma magnetic polarities and gave the group the three-way configuration. Right as it turned ice on, it was, it's like ice on triggered it to change, and it did. We're watching it, guys. It's going to be hard to get many pictures of ice on the next few days because it's so close to the sun. We'll be watching it. Heads up.